I think the coolest thing about DAV is uh, the way they're aiming to solve just that coordination problem. They're providing a, a network and a platform uh, and a set of APIs that make it possible for them to sort of help uh, weave together all these disparate uh, entities and make sure that they, ha they have a consistent API, they have a consistent interface uh, that everyone can adhere to and that means that you'll be able to treat the entire DAV network like uh, one big system rather than you know the hundreds of individual uh, organizations and items and people that it is uh, and I think that will make it much easier to sort of interface with this new world of transportation. I have a lot of experience uh, building distributed systems uh, thinking about uh, concerns like uh, robustness and scalability um, and I think uh, those play well into platforms like DAV uh, and in the past two years I've been focusing on uh, building decentralized systems without sort of central control uh, and building things that run on the Ethereum blockchain and I've developed a lot of experience there as well as doing code auditing and uh, other activities like that. I think transportation in the future is going to look quite different to how it does today with the rise of uh, autonomous vehicles uh, and self-driving vehicles uh, I think it's going to become less common that people will own their own vehicles as a result uh, when you can always call up a driverless vehicle when you need it there's less need to actually own a, a car full time uh, which will lead to more renting uh, and I think as a result of this also we'll see uh, many different types of vehicles become more common uh, presently people drive sedans and hatchbacks and so on because they're good sort of general purpose vehicles they you know they carry people they carry cargo and so forth but when you can call up one on demand you can call up one that satisfies your immediate needs instead of your sort of general purpose needs so i think we'll see a lot of uh you know delivery vehicles and cargo vehicles and and smaller passenger carriers and and alongside the existing ones such as cars and vans and so forth and i think more commonly those will be uh, owned by people who are renting them out rather than by the individuals uh, since they don't have any need to, to um, own them persistently. The greatest hurdle to adoption of these new technologies I think is going to be the issue of communication and integration. There's uh, going to be a lot of parties involved in bringing this about. Uh, manufacturers and users and uh, service providers and so forth and they all need to be sort of knitted together in a way that ensures they can all uh, operate efficiently and effectively and um, make sure we, we build an environment that's sort of easy to navigate. We don't want a situation where there are 50 different providers each of which does only one specific thing and you have to navigate through a dozen apps on your phone to find just the right one for your current situation. And for that to work, we're going to need to have a robust infrastructure that can support that and a sort of coherent set of APIs and interfaces and uh, user experience that can allow people to leverage all of that for their needs. Uh, I think it's going to be crucial for people to cooperate. Um, without it, we end up with a, a sort of a very heterogeneous system, one where uh, you know, everybody is operating their own platform and their own app um, where you not only have to you know, find the appropriate app for your current situation uh, or the current service, appropriate service provider for the current situation but you may even uh, be unable to achieve things that would be possible if they were working together. For instance, your uh, drone flight can't go further than the, the city limits because it's a different company uh, past there or something that would require sort of multimodal transport where you go from one type of vehicle to another isn't possible because those providers aren't talking to each other. So I think uh, communication is going to be absolutely crucial in making sure that this uh, comes about. Uh, I think it's crucial that a, an open source community has uh, real and meaningful input into the, um, the product and the platform that it's formed around. So I think it's going to be really important that uh, you know, the dev platform and the team enable that uh, by uh, building a system that people can meaningfully contribute to. That makes a better system for everyone. The unique advantage of blockchain for the dev project is going to be its ability to integrate seamless payment and to build a system that doesn't rely on a single trusted party so that everyone involved in the system can uh, 
guarantee that they get the payment they expect when they expect it, so that they can build a robust reputation metrics and have a clear idea of what they can expect from their partners, and so that they can set up contracts such as uh, insurance and delivery contracts with an assurance that they'll be accomplished as expected.